Hello and welcome back to our World Conquest series. It's one more week of World Conquest. The new version has still the false positive virus or Trojan in, in that case. So I'm continuing here. Last time we made great progress and secured our little corner of this world. And this time I will start the Western campaign. So I will try to move in here and tr I'll fight a few of the larger realms and we'll see how it goes. Off screen I did a bit of management on my new conquests. All the cities now have some buildings. Most of the city cities are still level 1 even though we could upgrade it just because I don't want to pour too much of my population into administration. Landsberg over here, we will grow up a bit. Currently there's two Garfimi living here, so it will take a while until they are grown. Just so we can fortify it in case of a counter-attack. And Urgly Rio over here will be one of the cities I will grow up to be a bit larger. Simply because there's not much in this region. There's a bit of stone, which we don't need more of. But the region is very large and somewhat fertile, not very, in any case, uh, very fertile region, but area is the most important part for our Gafimi. So it is very easy to have a large population in here. And that's what we're going to do. So we have at least one larger city for the global buildings. So I can... For example, I would be able to place a school, which gives a flat bonus to all my other cities on the world map. Most importantly is the workers guild, but I don't think we'll have enough workforce to have both of those. I have a few cities out there with workers guilds. I could even upgrade this one, that would be nice. So. Those are giving a bonus to all our other cities, which is why we can have a unupgraded small village and still have a lot of buildings in here. As you can see, a level 1 Baltic Crawler Breeder, a level 4 Fishery. So our workforce is going pretty strong. We get 4 from technology, we get 3 from our title, we get 6 from this building. Which is the only one, only six workforce we would have without the other things. And we get nine from our build workers guilds. And because we are Garfimi, we are awesome, we also get the 25% bonus to the workforce. So we have 22 workforce in this small little thingy where we would originally only have nine, uh, six. My whole strategy is kind of banking on stacking up those global bonuses and then not building up the regions at all. So even a tiny small region we can do nothing with or we could do nothing with in another playthrough like the Amantan Gloria down here. I mean, okay, that one is pretty fertile. I'll take another one, which one is terrible. Yeah, here. Uh, Glisten the island has a area of 54. You could do nothing in here. And as you can see, our maximum is 188 Garfimi. As compared to some of our regions which have numbers in the in the five or six hundreds. So that's the plan for the global for the map. We're getting tons of taxes. So we will become pretty rich. Okay, that's just because of the of the peace deal we made. My warehouses are already spilling over. I'm hoping my frames can take can take it that there will be quite a bit of stuff lying on the floor. I'm quickly checking, do we export coal? Yes, we do. Okay, we need more workers in here, doing the exporting for us. Okay, so 
that's our immediate goal and in our city the only thing I will do is I will tear down some of the Baltic Crawler Breeders just so we have more space. I did fully employ my first administration building with 74 administrators or clerks and I built a second one I just copy pasted it so we have access to more administration points and with it I completely messed up the fungus halfway so let's rebuild it other than that there's not much I can do on the city map we will start to produce more and more goods for our soldiers just so that we can maybe in the future upgrade uh, get some regional divisions some of you asked me why I don't recruit a standing army like I could place an army here and then I could recruit regional divisions as you can see we have access to 8280 Garfimi soldiers there's one simple region for, uh, reason for it uh, I would have to clothe this army I would have to supply them with rations all of which I have to produce in my city and the most important reason is that raids which spawn very frequently do scale with the number of soldiers I have so for now I have my Argonosh which are very strong soldiers but very few in numbers but the numbers do scale the raiders less than if I would recruit a giant divisional uh, regional division army then I would get raided by 5000 raiders and my Argonosh would be out of the depth and we have a hard cap on Argonosh once we own all the havens that's that's it we don't have any way to get more Argonosh there is a few tricks but those are exploits and I'm ne not using exploits for this everything I'm doing is without using bugs except for the bugs we are playing as you know what I'm talking about So, that's my goal, that's my plan. I'll let some time pass on the city map and I'll be back once I'm ready to conquer more of the world. Okay, on the administration front I did a few things that probably break this whole play for a bit. I upgraded Urgle Rio and build a level 3 school in here which gives a 25% boost to everything even our taxes so we get a lot of taxes from our empire which we are spending on buying eggs I think most of it yeah at least our trade income is going down but more importantly with the around 800 administration we had I upgraded the worker buildings the worker headquarters so we have in Instrag a level 3 worker headquarter with which gives some global workforce in new part over here we have a level 3 one we have in Travgood one level 3 one and in one of the new regions we have a level 4 one so our workforce globally is boosted by plus 25. So I could go around the whole world map again and upgrade all the buildings. But I mean we're getting more stuff than we can use at the moment. We have 62, 67 food days and I have finally enabled a deferred ration for our people. I mean we can even give them a fourth ration if we so please and we will still have 55 food days so I will make space for even more crates of food in this work uh, in this warehouse and 
we'll just stockpile up more food so we are safe in case of raids. But as you can see, I have a lot of workforce still being not used all around the places. I can even upgrade the fortifications here a bit. So what I'm going to do now is I will take my Bucks Team 6. 60, sorry. Still messing up the name. I will tell them to sell the out. We'll keep the home bugs home. So in case of a raid, we'll have some defense. I will even upgrade them to have 60 Argonosh. And my army is forming. And then we'll move out to the west side of the map. And I think we'll take as much as we can possibly take. I'm quickly checking if we are flattering those guys. Because I think we are going to be a threat to them very soon. But we'll find out in a bit. So let's move out to Flansburg. Okay, we are ready. The enemy has a force of 122 soldiers over here, but I'm not scared. I think I won't even get any mercenaries for this one. Before I declare war and we start, I'm doing one thing that has been requested for a long time. I'm using the make diagonal tool to get the roundness we already have in our city also to our eyeballs. And now we are just making everything round. I think this has been requested five or six times now. I knew about the tool, I just kept forgetting. So now we are just making everything diagonal. So all the things that should be round are also round to our eyes. I mean, I can even... Can I select? No, I can't select the whole city. Okay, I think I'm almost there. And now if we zoom in to the tip of our jewelry, for example, it's all nice and round. So this finally happened. And now for some more beautiful things, I will declare war and I'll move up. And I don't think I will show you every single thing. I'll make one big time lapse of me marching to the north and conquering. And then I'll show you afterwards how the campaign turned out. In case of any surprising things or in case of some nice big battles, I will pause the game and show you.
Okay, as you can see, we made quite some progress on the Western Front. My people are pretty exhausted. We lost 12 Argonosh in the process. I had to recruit some mercenaries on the way because there was a larger realm that we needed to fight. But I think we made great progress and it is time to give my Argonosh some well-deserved rest at home. We'll need to replenish their numbers and then we can move out again. I also dropped quite a bit of money on mercenaries as you can see. But with all the new regions we just have to tax them and we are fine. To have 72 food days. Even after enabling full rations for my people so yeah. We're getting 3500 fish every single day. Our food production rate is at 7,500 and our consumption rate is at 3,400. I don't think food is a problem anymore or will be anytime soon. We also have 30,000 science stored up. So what I'm going to do is I will take taxes? I don't think we need taxes actually. I think I'll invest in my army and I'll get even more levels of offense and defense skill. And that's it for now. Now we just... I will do some region management with all the new laces we just conquered. And I will have to replenish my Argonaut soldiers. They should arrive in one day. Oh, I think we inadvertently did the thing where we sent Argonosh on the world map and then we let more Argonosh join us. So that's one of the ways we could go over the capacity, but that's, I think, an exploit. So I'll not do that. But Spux Team 6 is immediately replenished. So actually, that might be a good way to increase the speed at which we can conquer. Because as you saw, that took quite a while and if we have to take all of this for this series to be complete that would take me ages so we'll have to speed it up somehow our neighbors are still okay with us that's surprising to me in the last version people caught Pretty upset once you were too big, but this version seems to be a bit more lenient. Even though we are playing, by the way, I have to remind you guys, on the hardest difficulty. Yeah, so things are looking pretty fine. I'll keep it going a bit and update you in a bit. Okay, we have... We have a world war on our hands. This Celeste has secretly conspired against you and convinced other factions to join in a war against us. Now we need to check the actual situation on the world map. We have this Celeste down here who has declared war on us. That was our vessel. And they made this realm over here. Arcania join them. And Flansburg, Flans Public, down here. Okay, so this Celeste, obviously, not much of a problem. Not even Flans Public is a problem. But I'm guessing that Arcania over here in the north has quite an army. So what we're going to do is we are going to recruit three armies. One army in the north. Then we need one army next to Flans Public who can contend with their army of 29 soldiers. And we are going to recruit yet another army with one unit of mercenaries who are going to intercept them over there.
Okay, we have won the war. We have finally broken him. A few rebel settlements remain, but his realm has collapsed and we are owning most of his former territories. I sped it up because, as you saw, my strategy is as follows. His army is recruited. I'm waiting until it's reinforced. Then I'm fighting the army inside of the region of a fortified city. The city uh, division is automatically joining the fight. Then I can defeat both, mostly through auto resolves, but sometimes I have to fight it. Which means his army is dead and his city is unguarded and ready for the taking. It's... I, I don't know if I would call it an exploit. It's mostly a very big time saver because the result would be the same. But I would have to siege down every single settlement of his. So doing it this way is just a lot faster. We have one neighbor I would like to become colleagues with. Which he wants a lot of territory for. Which we are definitely not giving him. Instead we are giving him some money. Just to keep our borders here secure. Sooner or later we will fight him. But at the moment I'm a bit too open. To accept a fight like that. Our other border region is secure. We have our friendly realms over here. And since we have taken another 20 settlements or so. Or let's count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And 14 is also joining. That will mean I will have to do a lot, a lot of region management off screen. Just so we are getting something out of it. In the meantime, we got raided quite a bit. I had to pay off all the raids. Since my army is gone, I don't have the soldiers needed to defend. But I will recall my two Argonosh divisions now, just so we are safe from raids. And my mercenaries over here can keep besieging the settlement. Uh, Science-wise, we are doing pretty good. 36,000. I built a new lab, a new warehouse, a larger metal smelter since we are running pretty low on metal and I'm producing my own machinery. But I think with this western campaign uh, our realm has grown quite a bit as you can see. We also almost reached the northern regions. I mean we are in the north over here. The cold, the climate should be cold. Yeah, there's some cold spots over here. So the western side of the map is looking like we have it under control. Weather forest over here is a choke point, a natural choke point. So I will fortify this place up a bit. And I think it is time for us to recruit some soldiers just so we have some soldiers at home that can defend us if our Argonosh are out in and out and about it's taking them quite a while to come home they were on the other side of the globe so in 20 days our home bugs will be home and our bugs team 60 as well I think what we're going to do next is we're going to recruit a few more Argonosh. And the Bucks Team 60 is growing. I'm sorry, the name is nice, but we need to get that unit up in numbers. So I think this was a very successful episode. Thank you for watching and see you the next time. Goodbye.